Welcome to my list of my top 25 board games of all time. Number 25 on this list is going to shock you. <laughs> Are we on like a clickbaity website right now? Number 25 is Gizmos. I'm not ultra shocked because I've seen you play quite a lot on BGA lately. It's, it's a fun little engine builder. I think it lasts a really good amount of time like your engines get pretty good but they don't get completely out of control mm. and the game ends pretty quickly like you always want to be doing more i i'm not a fan i don't know I, I like the concept of it i like you know that you do a chain reaction of actions but i feel like getting the pick cards and the build cards early just lets you snowball while the others don't find the cards and it's very like frustrating I think there's some luck, but probably not as much luck as, as you think. Yeah, it's possible. Number 24 on the list will shock you. <laughs> okay, I'll be doing that 25 times. Number 24 is Parks. Oh, yeah, okay. It was very hard to pick like between the top 20 to 30. Parks just made it in. I, I enjoy the theme. I enjoy the worker placement aspect. It probably is unique to a lot of the other games in my list. Uh, but just really relaxing, going along the trail, getting your resources. Thematically, it's a bit weird picking up sunshine and raindrops, but <laughs> it's pretty cool that you can spend them on parks. <laughs> and the art is beautiful. Yeah, the art's very good. It's a beautiful game. Number 23 on this list is Res Arcana. Oh, it didn't shock me. <laughs> Actually, I am shocked. I thought it would be higher. <laughs> I think if we were to do this list maybe six months ago, it would be a lot higher. I was sort of burned out from it a bit. Mm -hmm. But having said that, it's still a very solid game. Mm -hmm. um, I guess after that many plays, you sort of play the same... You sort of play the same game multiple times. Like, you get the Dragon Slayer or you get the Catacombs. Mm -hmm. It's very similar. But there's still a lot of unique things you can do. It's a fun engine builder and it's a tight race to 10 points, which is enjoyable. Yeah. Number 22 is Blood Rage. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't have many area control games in my top list. Mm. I don't typically play area control games much. Mm. But I decided to give Blood Rage a go and was pleasantly surprised. It was very fun. What I like most about it is, it's not just about controlling areas. You can win in other ways. You can win by killing off your own army, so it doesn't ever feel like you're out of the game. The card drafting is, is a unique twist on it. Mm. And I think it's very good at, at all player counts, between mm. 2 to 5 even. Number 21 on the list is Burgle Bros. Oh, it's so low! <laughs> you, you, you may be shocked to see a co-op game here, but it's <laughs> one of the few co-op games I actually enjoy playing. Mm. There are just some very funny situations that happen where everyone's like stuck on this one tile, praying the guard doesn't hit them all. <laughs> and then the guard inevit inevitably does and everyone dies. It's yeah, very humorous, but it's a good combination of luck and forward planning. Mm. I think it's a unique experience of different player counts because in two players, you have to worry about the guard a bit less, but you obviously can't explore the rooms as quickly. Mm. But with more players, that guard is going to be coming around the room very quickly and you can, mm. you can get in trouble very quickly. Mm. <laughs> Number 20 while we're on the bees is... I don't think it's Honey Bus because you don't like it. It's an H. Oh, I thought you said the bees. <laughs> <laughs> you won't get it. It's Butterfly. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> Butterfly is like this really simple looking game. It's like it looks like it's designed for kids, but <laughs> it's actually really highly tactical. It's like almost like a, a chess version of a kids game. <laughs> yeah, like a, it's like a chess version of a kids game. Both players control this one hedgehog. You take it in turns collecting these different butterflies or dragonflies or all these different bugs with your little bug net, and they all score points, but some of them are negative points. And some of them are random tiles if you go through a net. It's highly tactical, very fun. Also good at all player counts, I feel. I personally don't like the game, but fair, I guess. <laughs> I got introduced to the game. I got tricked into the game. To, like, I've been told it's like Sovek to players. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit. No. I don't know. I just find it very frustrating. It's very, like, chess-like. 
So you can really force the other, force the other person to take something, even if you, ah, even if they don't want to. And I feel like I'm always on the bad side of the, <laughs> the numbers here. Yeah, if you don't plan far enough ahead, I imagine why it would be frustrating. Yes, yes, I, I'm not good at chess. <laughs> I never, never pretended I was. <laughs> Number 19 on the list is Terra Mystica. This game will probably end up being higher if we do one next year, if we do a top 25 list next year. I just haven't played it a, a whole lot yet, but from what I've played so far, it's very enjoyable, very deep, very complex. The, the how to play video was like 30 minutes long, but I got through it. There's really a lot of planning involved. There's very little luck involved in the game, I think, which is something I enjoy a lot. The more I play it, the more I'm sure I'll enjoy it. Number 18 on the list is Glow. Oh. This is like... I would describe this game as like super Yahtzee. You're rolling dice, but at the same time, you're collecting these characters every round that make your dice better. Mm. And you're also moving around the board. I think the balance in the game is a little off, but it is very enjoyable to play. Mm. Artistically, it's beautiful. Thematically, it's pretty great. I'm very much looking forward to the expansion that's coming out. Yeah. Number 17 on the list is Detective Club. Oh. Yeah, it's a, it's a party game. It's not a co-op game. I really enjoy putting people into stressful situations. <laughs> some people panic, some people are really good at lying. It's mm -hmm. great. Having to creatively think of a reason why you picked a card is just awesome. It leads mm -hmm. to some very funny moments. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we've ever had a bad time playing it. No, I don't think so either. With our friend group, it's very hard to predict who's lying because they all come up with stupid reasons to play cards. And it means I usually come last, but it's very fun. <laughs> Number 16 is Telestrations. Oh, another party game. <laughs> the way we play it, there's no scoring involved. Everyone can have a fun time without worrying about the stress of winning or losing. Yeah. I am a horrible drawer. <laughs> But it's, it's very funny having people have to interpret my terrible drawings and then describe them and then go on to the next person who has to draw what I've horribly drawn. The, the reveals at the end where you're flipping through the notebooks is great. I don't think there's any, there's a, another game with like a better reveal phase. It's just so much fun. Yeah. Number 15 is my shelfie. Oh. I actually did not expect that. I only started playing, well, the game only came out recently. I've played maybe 50 or 60 games of it already, and this is in the last three or four months. It's simple enough to play, almost like it was designed for kids as well, but it's actually surprisingly tactical. You obviously want to be taking things that are good for you, but you don't want to open the board too much for your opponents. There's always a dilemma of how much to take, where to place it, should you be racing for this goal or should you be focusing more on your personal goal or ideally doing both? There's a lot of decisions to make in such a simple game. Number 14 on the list is Al Mahdi. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't really know how this game hasn't taken off more because it's just great. Mm -hmm. If I were to pick one game on Board Game Arena to play in turn-based, this would be it. It's... It plays so smoothly in turn-based mode. The decisions you make each turn, like, you want to think about them a lot, so it can definitely lead to some analysis paralysis. If you're playing on turn-based, that's not a problem. Only, you only get 16 turns, and those 16 decisions are very Im impactful. It's got a bit of set collection, a bit of point salad. Every tile you place on your board is probably going to help you. Some, some will help you more than others. You collect little things during your turns, you can move your tiles around with special abilities, it's, it's great fun. Yes, I like it too, it's very good. I, I think it's a bit underrated, honestly. Oh, it's criminally underrated. Yeah. Number 13 is Modern Art. Ah, yeah! It's just such a great bidding game. What I like most is selling your own paintings, even though these paintings have no intrinsic value at all. It's fun to pretend to be the auctioneer and be like, yeah, you should buy this painting. It's by this great artist. It'll have a lot of value in the future. You can say whatever you want to sell this painting. The decision of 
Like I want to sell this painting now because I, because I want the value of my paintings to go up, but then I also want to hold the painting for later because it'll be worth more later. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's very interesting decisions. Number 12 on the list is Castles of Burgundy. If you were to show a casual person this game, they'd probably say it looks incredibly boring. The theme is horrible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not horrible, but bland, maybe. Beige. But for a game that has you rolling dice every turn, there's very little luck involved in it. And that's a great thing. There's many different things you can focus on, and depending on which of the 10 different boards you get, they can all be equally viable on different boards. So there's a lot of replayability there. I think the game plays well at 2, 3, or 4, but 2 is probably the most balanced, and then 4 is a bit more chaotic, but you can normally still get tiles you want in, in, as a, in a 4-player game. Uh, yeah, I'm sure as I play this game more, it'll increase in the ranks as well. It's okay, baby. Number 11 on the list. Now this will actually shock you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My expectations are really high. <laughs> Terraforming Mars. Ugh. Bit of a hot take for, for Gladys here, but this is actually just a, a very solid game. It takes a while. There's a bit of luck. It's card drafting. There's a little bit of engine building going on. You don't actually score that many points, so it's it's not like one person just gets ahead for the whole game and they're unstoppable. There's, mm. there's plenty of ways to come back. I like the balance of it. And I enjoy that you can go for many different strategies. Well, I've played it a few times now. I've played it solo. Uh, I've played it, I think, four and five players. I hate it every single game I've played. I, I cannot stand the game. I think it's... Uh, it's very unpopular. I know the game is like highly, highly loved. I, it's, it's okay. The game's not here. It can't hurt. I know, you. but I, I know that lots of people love the game, so I, I must be missing something, but I'm not having fun playing it. I find it boring. I find... The okay, this is not your top. <laughs> top, top 11 is Terraforming Mars. <laughs> Number 10 is Tiny Towns. Okay. It's a It's a quick little game. I enjoy the fact that when you call out something, everyone has to take it. So you can be annoying in that way. You can call out wheat when everyone already has three wheat on the board. Mm. Do you want more wheat? <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> wheat it is! <laughs> yeah, everyone gets wheat. Deal with it. But on top of that, there's some variance because you have your own secret building, so you may need a lot of wheat and the others just don't. So mm. that's one way to gain an advantage. If you deviate too much from the pack, you probably get stuck in a really bad situation. That's that's the one flaw of the game, I would mm. say. But it's enjoyable. You get your little hammer every turn. You can bang it against the table. <laughs> I call wait. <laughs> you don't have to do it, though. <laughs> Number nine on the list is the Stardew Valley board game. Ah, oh, it's in the top ten. This yeah. will be the only co-op game you'll see in the top ten of mine ever. When I think about my list of top ten games, I'm thinking... What do I actually want to play? Like, if someone asked me, what do I want to play? I would say these 10 games, and Stardew Valley is definitely up there for me. Luck-based or not, it's fun to play. Yeah. I like the theme because we obviously like the video game. Yeah. This would be a great game, just in general, even if you've, if you've never heard of the video game. There's yeah. a lot of different things to do. It's quite tight. You have a lot to do in a very short amount of time. But that's what makes it so great. There's... there's a lot of stressful decisions you have to make. It's also very pretty. It's not like pixel art like the video game. It's actual like nice drawings and all. I think it's mm. beautiful. Number eight. I'm surprised this didn't make your list, but uh. Red Rising. Oh my god, I completely forgot! <laughs> so, set collection is probably my favourite game mechanic. And this is just the ultimate set collection game, in my opinion. How could I forget? <laughs> you have a handful of cards. They all score based on what your, the other cards in your hand do. So you want to make this perfect combination and that just rewards forward planning so much. You have plenty of decisions to make during your turn, like do I want to get rid of this great card for me now? Hopefully I can pick it up later, but it gives me a nice reward now. Extra, extra cards are ridiculously strong, so yeah. if you find any way of getting extra cards, you'll probably be very far ahead of your yeah. opponents. That would be my main issue with the game. The, the, like the rarity of getting the extra cards and how impactful they are. Yeah. But still a very solid game. It's a very nice game, I agree.
Number seven on the list is Everdell. Mm. The theme and the artwork is just so adorable, but the gameplay holds up really well to it. There's a lot of depth to the gameplay that maybe makes the artwork a bit misleading, but it's, yeah, it's surprisingly heavy. I really enjoyed the, the combination of the worker placement and the tableau building. You don't get unlimited resources, you have very few resources to work with. Like in the first season, you only have two workers. So it's very important to get your engine building, yeah. to, to get your engine going early. But you don't want to build too much because you're limited by 15 cars. So you got to like choose wisely what you want to build. Mm. Mm. Yeah, if you focus too much on production, mm. well, all of a sudden you have all this production and no space for your actual point scoring cards. Yeah, exactly. yeah it's a good balance. Yeah. Number six on the list is June Imperium. Oh, it's only six. All right. <laughs> only six. Six. The sixth top game of all time is pretty pretty good in my opinion. So what I don't like in games is deck building. Oh really? I don't enjoy <laughs> deck building. The Jun Imperium is a very light deck builder. You're only adding one card every round and there's what, like maybe it's eight rounds max? I guess you can add more than one, but you often don't have the money to. Mm. So yeah, you don't actually build your deck that much, but the worker placement's good. The conflict in the middle is great. Mm -hmm. It's like a focal point for everyone to, to work towards. And it's very hard to get points. Yes. So you, you really have to decide, <laughs> is it worth going all in on this battle for one point, when the next round there could be two points, and you might save your soldiers for that later. Intrigue cards make it, make it so players are unpredictable. Yeah. Because okay. there's a lot of open information in the game, but the intrigue cards add that nice balance where you don't actually know if someone's going to win that fight or not. It feels a bit like uh, in Catan with your development cards. Does this person has a victory point, uh, have a victory point? Uh, do they have a, a knight? Uh, do they have a monopoly? Yeah, exactly. No, no. So. Number five on the list is Sagrada. Oh! I tend to enjoy sort of medium weight games the most, and Sagrada is like the perfect medium weight game in my opinion. Just the colourful dice on your boards is beautiful to look at. But apart from that, there's a lot of strategy behind it. You have to decide which goals you're going to commit to, how hard you're going to commit to them. Try to fill up all the goals at once while not wasting any dice. You have to prioritise stuff that's good for your own board while trying to get in the way of the others as much as possible, which is not easy to do. It's pretty welcoming to, to first-time players, I feel, as well. Yeah, very easy to explain. Mm. I would I would think it's leaning more towards light games than medium. I think it's very simple to teach, very simple to play. It's just very, it's it's harder to master than to yeah, play. Yeah, I think that that's a classic medium weight game. Easy to play but hard to master. Yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah, middle yeah. ground. Number four on the list is Next Station London. Oh yeah, I completely forgot about that game. Oh, it wouldn't have been in my top, but it yeah, uh, no, makes sense that it's in yours. <laughs> it's a game that also came out this year. And I find myself playing it every day. Yeah. In in the solo mode, no less. <laughs> oh my there's, god. There's a daily challenge on Board Game Arena, and it's just really fun to have all the same decisions as everyone else and see who gets the top score. I agree. It's a very fun daily challenge. The game in a multiplayer counts a little less balanced, but still pretty balanced. Mm -hmm. Just very fun drawing all these coloured lines, trying to create the perfect railway system. Mm -hmm. And yeah, very satisfying to play. Number three on the list is Azul. Okay. Yeah. It's like Sagrada, but it's I think it's slightly better. They're very similar games. I enjoy Azul a little bit more. It's a bit more tactical. You can be a lot meaner, especially at two players when you can when you can make other people discard tiles. Mm -hmm. One of those easy to learn games that's very hard to master. Mm -hmm. And once you do master it, there is very little luck involved. Yeah. I'm nowhere near mastering it after 300 games. Number two on the list is Agricola. Now when I first played this game, I did not enjoy it much at all. <laughs> when I first played it, I didn't play with any cards at all. So I was like, okay, everyone's trying to do the same thing. <laughs> this is just gonna be the same thing every game. But then I had one of the top players teach me this game mm -hmm. with the cards, <laughs> with decisions to be made and it's wonderful. Everyone is trying to do the same things, but there's so many different ways to get there that it's different every time. 
with the amount of cards on the on board game arena at the moment, it's very rare that you'll ever have two games that are the same. Mm -hmm. Being a worker placement, there's a lot of things you have to play around. People get in each other's way all the time. It's annoying. People always take my three wood stacks. How dare they? I think this year alone, I'm closing in on 200 games played of it. And these are not short games. Every game lasts for at least an hour. Yeah. So I've played a lot of Agricola and I want to keep playing it. It's, it's a very fun game. Do you enjoy it at two players? Because you only play at four as well. Yeah, I play this at four players. I think at two players, it's a very different game. I probably would not enjoy it as much. Mm. But, but there are many people that do enjoy it at two players mm -hmm. more than three or four players, so mm -hmm. that's fine. Well, uh, seeing you play it so often, I uh, kind of want to try it, but because I don't mind worker placements, I like to block the others. That's that's what I find fun about it. You should try it. But there's this mechanism of fitting your workers that's turned off to me. <laughs> But I really want to try also on the water city, which is basically every color but on the water. <laughs> but yeah, you get sheep would drown. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess they protected under the domes. <laughs> Number one on the list. This will be no surprise. It's a wonderful world. Yeah. This game I would have, I think, close to a thousand games played. It's great. I want to keep playing it. <laughs> It's just so satisfying watching your engine grow as you as you progress through the game. That's like that's what an engine builder is meant to be, but it just does it really well. The simultaneous turns makes game time very quick for anywhere between two to seven players. And although there's not too many different strategies you can do, there are many different ways to get there. It's a constant balance between do I take this production card or do I take this scoring card? If you focus too much one way or the other, you can get punished very hard. Mm. So it's a good balance. <laughs> That's it. It's a great game, yeah. Thanks for watching my list. See you guys next time. See ya, bye.